Cereza and the Lost Demon. Long ago, there existed two clans, the Lumen Sages of Light and the Umbra Witches of Darkness. Together, they controlled a mysterious power. The clans put in place strict laws to ensure that strife would never consume them. But a pair of star-crossed lovers broke this rule, and a child was born with the blood of both sage and witch. It was a beautiful baby girl. As punishment for their forbidden love, the pair were torn asunder. The girl's sage father was exiled to a far land and her mother locked away in a solitary jail. The witch clan took in the young girl, but she grew up shunned as a pariah, cursed by the circumstance of her birth. Her one comfort was the night she snuck into the village jail to visit her mother's cell. Her mother passed each grueling day barely able to so much as move in her cold cell. But when her daughter came to visit, the witch always showed her a loving smile. But even this small happiness eventually came to an end. On the night of the girl's 10th birthday, her mother was to be moved to a deeper cell where even the faintest memory of daylight could not reach her. In desperation, the girl tried a daring rescue, but with only a child's strength, the attempt was in vain. More alone than ever before, the young girl clung to all she had left. A stuffed cat named Cheshire, which her mother had made for her long ago. Many moons have since passed. Turning her back on the village, the girl was taken in by an exiled witch who lived on the outskirts of town. Under her strict guidance, the girl continued to train in the ways of the dark arts. She was determined to be a powerful witch and one day save her mother. Her name was Ceresa. What do you think you're doing? 
Cereza, you're almost out of time. This is your last chance. If you don't hurry, you may never see your mother again. John, I... I can't. Ah, oh, you big baby. Come on, I'll lead the way. Stop dallying! We don't have all night. Sean, wait! I can't run that fast! We're almost there! Hurry up! to me. You hurry on ahead. Wait! John! I can't do this alone! That dream again, but the ending. It was a dream Ceresa knew by heart, but this time something had changed. Ceresa decided to consult her friend Cheshire. A strange boy appeared, 
and told me something incredible. He said, if I went to Avalon Forest, he'd give me a fantastic power. If we had that, rescuing Mummy would be a piece of cake. The Forbidden Forest. The oft-repeated warning from Ceresa's teacher rung in her ears. Avalon Forest is home to fairies, creatures who love to whisk away children. Stay away. Ceresa, where are you, my dear? Ceresa's teacher Morgana was standing by the door, her frown discernible even from a distance. Chores neglected, and I find my apprentice enjoying her beauty sleep. I'm sorry. Uh, I just closed my eyes for a second. I, I was, I... Uh... Ceresa began making an excuse, but Morgana's scowl stopped her in her tracks. Yes, ma'am. I'll get to them right away. But despite her best intentions, Ceresa's gaze drifted back towards Avalon Forest. This did not go unnoticed by Morgana. Oh, if I've told you once, Ceresa, you must never enter that forest. With your current abilities, you would soon become a snack for one of the fairies who live there. Yes, Morgana, I know. Well then, stop your dreaming and finish those chores before moonrise, young lady. All right. Water from the well, coming right up. A simple yes will suffice, Ceresa. Off you go. Despite her strict exterior, Ceresa had grown attached to her teacher. Morgana had also been cast out of the village. She understood Ceresa's pain, and her stern treatment came from a place of love. Ceresa often reminded herself that these chores were all part of her training. Eager to please her master, she hurried off towards the well. Fetching a pail of water, it may seem like a simple chore, but it requires a fine sense of control, making it perfect for Umbran training. After laying eyes on the full bucket, Morgana gave a small nod of approval. Good. Now collect the herbs from the garden. Oh. oh. At the thought of herbs, Ceresa could not help but make a face. This is one job she wished could be forever stricken from her regimen. Do we have a problem? No, ma'am. Trying not to think about the task awaiting her, Ceresa headed towards the herb garden. The herbs in Morgana's garden were not your common basil or thyme. She grew infernal plants with an absolutely foul stench. They typically burrowed to avoid sunlight, but a little bit of magic made them pop right up.
helping of magic coming right up. Teresa was pleasantly surprised. She usually managed to make a mess with even this rudimentary magic. I can't wait to see the look on Morgana's face. <laughs> Cereza hummed a happy tune while picking the herbs. As she bent down, she noticed a pretty flower growing amongst the weeds. Oh, those flowers would really bring out the colour in Morgana's eyes. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't mind if it weren't for the smell. Ceresa proudly gave the basket to Morgana. It was full to bursting. How about that, Morgana? Quite the harvest, wouldn't you say? I also picked these violets. They're for you. I thought you might like them. Atop the herbs lay a small wreath. Morgana glanced down at it. Her expression unchanged. She spoke to Ceresa in her usual tone. Do not expect praise for this sort of perfunctory performance. Oh, and Cereza, your hair today seems to have lost its sheen. Do not tell me that in addition to your outdoor tasks, you're also neglecting your hair. Uh, no, ma'am. It's next on my list. Uh, remember, Cereza, hair is the most versatile tool of an Umbra witch. It can be shaped into our armor, weapons, and even used as a medium for summoning infernal demons. As blood flows through veins, magic flows through a witch's hair. Care for it as you would your most precious tool, and defend it as you would your very heart. Understood. I'll make sure to finish up before training starts tonight. Good. Now get back to your chores. The shadows grew long. The moon will soon rise. With this, Morgana turned and walked back towards the house. Yes, ma'am. At times, Morgana's cold treatment got Ceresa down. But she knew that Morgana cared for her and only wanted what was best for her. <laughs> Making a quick recovery, Ceresa resolved to finish her remaining chores in record time. Almost time for today's training. I'd better hurry, or I'm in for another lecture. With the household chores complete, it was time for Ceresa's daily training in the dark arts. Today, she was finally going to get a chance to attempt a spell she had been practicing for weeks, summoning an infernal demon. For today's training, I will give you a little help. Before even learning what it did, Ceresa was captivated by the intricate brace. 
This is a tool for those who have yet to master the flow of magic. Furthermore, we train under the full moon of the bisextile night, when the dark energy we Umbra harness is at its zenith. <clears throat> Are you listening, young lady? You seem determined today. Perhaps I should let you nap more often. Yes, ma'am. Sarita's spirits were high. She was determined to succeed. Mataiva Tozu! Step by step, <laughs> Sarita flawlessly performed the summoning dance. Until... This looked like trouble. <laughs> Unless bound by hair, there would be no way to control the demon. <laughs> the demon turned to ash mere inches from Cereza. Without a proper medium, demons will soon die in our world. Ah. Uh. We are finished for today. L let me try again, please. Morgana turned and walked away, ignoring her pupil's desperate plea. What kind of witch fears her own summoned familiar? I was foolish to think you were ready for this training. Morgana told Teresa to put away the magic brace before heading back to the house. Long after Morgana was gone, Teresa sat moping in the garden. Out of habit, she shared her troubles with Cheshire. Forget returning to the village and saving Mummy. At this rate, I'll never even become a witch. All of a sudden, the words from the boy in her dream echoed in her ears. Teresa, give you the power to save Mother. Avalon Forest, the white wolf guide you. Avalon Forest? Ceresa's eyes wandered back to the forest. Morgana's repeated warnings left little room for ambiguity. And yet... Morgana is always dangerous this and stay away that. How could a dank old forest be that scary a place anyway? Adults do often exaggerate to keep kids in their place. This thought got Ceresa's blood boiling. Grievances started bubbling up. Nothing I do is ever good enough for her. Did you see those herbs? Flawless! As she blew off steam to Cheshire, she noticed Morgana's brace shining in the moonlight. What, oh, what are you saying, Cheshire? Take the brace and sneak into the forest? Morgana would give us a right smack on the bottom. Although, with the moon shining brightly, it was the ideal chance for a little surreptitious forest excursion. I mean, if I just had another chance to get the hang of it, I could have gotten that demon totally under wraps. With a demon by her side, eviscerating a fairy or two would be child's play. That's it! I'm going to that forest! And when I come back with that fantastic power, Morgana will take back everything she said about me not being ready. Let's go, Cheshire. Next stop, Avalon!
Ceresa shivered at the thought of what lay ahead. But curiosity got the better of her. Let's go, Cheshire. And so Ceresa threw caution and her teacher's warnings to the wind and set out towards Avalon Forest. Little did she know that what lay waiting in those dark woods would change her fate forever. Massive trees blocked almost all light from the moon. An eerie silence enveloped Teresa. She cautiously ventured onwards. Oh! Don't surprise me like that! Teresa, one foot in front of the other. A plant from Inferno. I wonder how it will respond to my magic. Brace? Looking into the dark underbrush, Ceresa could not shake the feeling that someone was looking back. As the wind rustled the leaves, it sounded just like a rasping voice whispered in her ear. I can't turn back now. I'm going to become a witch and save Mummy.
that? <sighs> Must have been a rabbit or something. Right, Cheshire? Is... is someone out there? Teresa could not shake the feeling she was being watched. Is someone there? Show yourself! And then, as if to answer her call... were fairies, nefarious creatures who ensnare the souls of humans who venture into the woods to feed on their vitality. This time there was nowhere to run. Ceresa was backed into a corner. Please, please work this time. Fingers crossed, Ceresa prepared to use the summoning spell she learnt from Morgana. Even after the summoning circle had faded away, no one had answered her call. Why? I did everything right! The fairies resumed their sinister mission. All at once, they jumped at Ceresa. Weapons poised to strike. She shut her eyes tight and prepared for the worst. A moment passed, uh, huh? and then another, but she felt not so much as a pinprick. What? Who are you? Chomp! Ah! <laughs> that beast, as dark as a moonless night, had it all been a dream? You don't think... Could that have been... But before Ceresa could finish her question... From its gaping maw, extending ear to ear, fell a drop of thick slobber. Wait, did I manage to summon a demon that has now possessed Cheshire? As if in reply, the beast growled and bared its blood-red fangs, just as Ceresa feared. A demon had indeed possessed her beloved stuffed cat. The creature had desperately sought a medium in order to survive in our world. In lieu of hair, it settled for one made of felt. Looking around, the demon's eyes found Ceresa. It let out a low growl. After her initial terror, Ceresa realized that she was able to understand what the demon was saying. You... you want me to return you to Inferno? Now, how would one go about doing that? Ceresa had her hands full calling a demon to this world. She hadn't even begun to study the spell to send them back. Ceresa once again heard the demon's words, this time even more clearly. Send me back! Send me back! The demon's rage increased by the second, but there was nothing Ceresa could do. 
out of patience, he pounced. Claws like daggers descended on Ceresa. <laughs> But what if we hear? The demon had stopped cold. As if bound by an invisible force, no matter how he struggled, he was unable to touch Cereza. Calm down! You're going to burst the seam! Don't worry, I'll send you home. Once I figure out how... I'm on my way to get a fantastic power! With that, sending you back should be a piece of cake. Giving up his attack, the demon turned his attention elsewhere. Intrigued, but a little scared, Ceresa decided to follow a bit behind. The demon ran through the forest, searching for a way home. I'm in no mood for pests! Get ready for a faceful of claw! The demon leapt towards the berries. The demon slashed with his razor-sharp claws. But something felt off. His power seemed to escape him. Slowly, but surely. What's wrong? Ah! The demon bared his fangs. He was clearly suffering. Are you sick? Or hungry, perhaps? As Cereza approached, the demon felt the strength return to his body. In an instant, he felt right as rain. His body was linked to Cereza by powerful magic. Moving away from her robbed it of its energy. What's that? I need to stay close to you? I've never heard of a spell like this before. How do you plan on getting me back to Inferno? The demon demanded. We first need to find a white wolf. He'll show us the way. Leave it to me, I'll find him, said the demon as he clambered to his feet. Um, I'm Cereza. What's your name? I have no name, replied the demon curtly. You don't have a name? That must be terribly inconvenient. Though I must admit, I haven't the faintest idea about demonic manners. May I call you Cheshire? That's the name of the stuffed cat you decided to borrow after all. Well, I need to call you something. If you're going to make a fuss about it, why don't you just find a new body? Fine! I'll just call you whatever I please. And so these strange companions set off in search of the White Wolf. What mysteries await in Avalon Forest? The demon seemed to have calmed down. Remembering that he could not touch her, Ceresa breathed a sigh of relief. I'll go first to make a path. 
You wait here. Once, Cheshire's body shrunk to its original cuddly form. Cheshire! Cerisa ran to pick up Cheshire and held him tightly to her chest. In her arms, Cheshire felt his strength returning. Release me at once! Even in this form, the demon did not seem happy about being cuddled. Just hold still! Still, will you? While you're small, you can't walk on your own, right? I'll carry you until you can transform again. Not having a massive demon breathing down my neck will make it easier for me to calm down too. While far from pleased about being treated like a stuffed animal, the demon had no choice but to swallow his pride. Before them stood a large wolf. Its snow-white fur shone pale silver in the moonlight. Avalon Forest, the white wolf guide you. Cereza was captivated by the wolf. It seemed almost not of this world. The world before Ceresa seemed to warp and bend. She blinked hard to no avail. Could this be a fairy trick? Cheshire was losing patience with his hesitant companion. Come on! We've still got that wolf to catch! Uh, I'm getting ready. Just give me a second. As soon as she took a step inside, she felt as if the breath had frozen in her chest. All around her were sights strange and terrible, as if she had been dragged into a waking nightmare. I... I'm fine. It takes more than this to scare me. There's something here. Upon close inspection, there appeared to be distortions, as if the air itself had cracked. Equally confused, the girl and demon exchanged a glance. That wolf was just up ahead. Cheshire's indecision did not last long, but try as he might, he was unable to open the cracks any further. Try using magic to open it? Come on! We have no idea what's lurking on the other side. Cheshire gave a mocking snort at Cerisa's cowardice. I am not making excuses! All right, fine! Okay, Cerisa. 
just like you practiced. Once their eyes had adjusted to the brilliant light, what lay before them was a sight unlike anything either had seen before. Cheshire, I have a feeling we're not in Avalon anymore. the boy from my dream. Center of the forest. Waiting. Help me. How? Okay. Uh, I just need to follow the white wolf. Right? Destroy all elemental cores. You can do it. Follow White Wolf. They had returned from the strange world. The forest was just as they had left it, except not quite. It seemed that destroying the device at the core of that rift somehow disrupted the illusion, revealing the true path forward. In a nearby grove, there was a place illuminated by moonlight as she approached, the magic brace in Ceresa's wrist began to glow. So I have finally found you, Ceresa. Morgana? Ceresa blinked in disbelief as the ghostly figure of her teacher appeared from within the moonlight. Thank goodness you're safe. When I realized you'd gone to the forest, I was beside myself with worry. But really, Ceresa, to eat the forest despite all my warnings, you even made off with my magic brace. Just what were you thinking? Although this was only a projection of Morgana, her scolding somehow managed to be even more intimidating than the genuine article. Ceresa could only hang her head. I am looking forward to a thorough explanation once you're home safe. But I'm afraid escaping the Avalon Forest will not be easy. Morgana's expression was grave. She explained how the fairy's magic turned the forest into a labyrinthine trap. 
one in which Ceresa was currently ensnared. This ancient enchantment was so strong, even Morgana herself could not easily break it. For now, all I can do is support you from afar. I will begin researching ways out of the forest. You just find a safe place, and try to stay alive until I find a way to save you. Don't worry, Morgana. Look, I was able to summon a demon of my very own. Is that... You summoned a demon into your stuffed toy? Ceresa... Well, it will have to do. If you are able to wield that demon, your chances of survival will increase greatly. This forest belongs to the fairies. However, if you search carefully, I am sure you will find objects that will help you develop your magic abilities. What about these sparkly things? I've picked up a bunch of them since I've got here. Yes, that crystalline structure is a stable source of magical energy. If you feed it to the demon, it may awaken some new powers. The light of the moon began to wane. With it, Morgana's visage grew faint. It was as if the forest itself conspired to impede their plans. Teresa, listen well. Demons are weapons which we witches wield, not friends to be cuddled. Remember to treat them as such. The remaining moonlight faded, and Morgana disappeared. Cheshire was in a foul mood. What was that? Morgana is my master, and I will not have you speak of her in that way. I feel bad for worrying her, but I don't get why she's so overprotective. I mean, I summoned a demon and everything. Ceresa wished that just once Morgana would tell her she did a good job. She had already forgotten Morgana's scolding. Well, back to chasing the White Wolf. If we get that power, even Miss High and Mighty Morgana will sing our praises. Oh yeah, those little sparkly things. She said they might help you grow stronger. I wonder what that means. What is this? In one corner was a rock polished to a shiny finish. This would make a good substitute for the mirror she used when training. Hey! Without Morgana breathing down my neck, I might be able to get in some good practice. Worth a try. Cheshire, here you go. Can't you move any faster? The wolf was getting away and Cheshire was not happy about it. I'm going as fast as I can! We'd be able to move a lot faster if you would give me a ride on your back! The demon said nothing. His glare was all the answer Ceresa needed. That's what I thought. Wolf run off to now. What's that over there? Let's go check it out. All of a sudden, a tough looking fairy appeared out of nowhere. Ceresa was startled, but tried to regain her composure. Why don't you flock off already and leave us alone? Ah! 
Cheshire let out a sigh as he pushed past Zeresa to face down the fairy. Who's gonna be the appetizer? And who shall I save for dessert? Roared Cheshire, his mane rippling and claws extended. A strange orb atop a pillar. Could this be the elemental core of which the boy in Ceresa's dream had spoken? Before it stood the white wolf. Just as Ceresa took a step towards the pillar to investigate, Wait! What are you doing? Leaping from Ceresa's grasp, Cheshire lunged towards the wolf. Stop running and tell us how to get that power already. Cheshire was fed up with this wild wolf chase. He wanted answers. Cheshire, stop and listen for a second. Missing his mark, Cheshire's claws struck the elemental core instead. All was quiet until... Energy poured from the core like a furious whirlpool. Standing in its midst, Ceresa felt a strange power flow through her. Cheshire roared his protest. He wanted his piece of the pie, but what exactly had they released? Let's go! Awesome! The pair had gained a new ability. Is this it? I can go home now? Cheshire asked excitedly. No, this is something different. We need to smash three more of those things before I can send you back. <sighs> but, 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 I, I'm, I'm sure this pair will come in handy for something too. I know, I know. That is why we're following that wolf in the first place. Speaking of that wolf, where did he go now? To find the other elemental cores, they first need to find him. I swear, you demons are more trouble than you're worth. The bickering companions left the remains of the core behind them, heading ever deeper into the forest. Ceresa spotted something that looked like fruit. Looks good. Quick, let's go get it. Cheshire enjoyed his snack. 
as Ceresa tried unsuccessfully to squeeze the pulp from her hair. Do you have any idea how important hair is to a witch? Be careful! Oh, all that fur on your head and a fat lot of good it's done you. Oh, the demon's retort was surprisingly deft. Quiet! I'm working on it! Just you wait! Hello there, miss! Who's there? Ceresa's heart leapt at the sudden voice. Good question. Let's just say I'm the one you talk to when you want to know about the goings on in this forest. Well, I'm not a fairy, at least. Take my word on that one. Says the creepy voice from the shadows. Try asking me something if you don't believe me. I'll answer any question you have. Okay, um... Have you seen any wh black wolves around the forest lately? Oh, but you're looking for a white wolf, aren't you? How, how did you know? You were a part of this forest now. That means your business has become my business. Trust in the path you take now, it's the right one. But you won't be able to find those elemental cores as easy as you think. You know about the elemental cores too? Okay, tell me more. Ahead, there is an old circus tent fairies use to lure human children into the forest. The crazed ringmaster and slaves poor souls there to perform in his shows until they die. Until they... die? My apologies. Was that too scary? But you won't worry. You and that demon of yours won't croak that easily. You've caused a big ruckus among those fairies since you entered this forest. That just proves they're scared of you. And that demon, of course. Well, I'm afraid I must go. I wish you both safe travels. The voice faded away, and silence once again enveloped the forest. And she's gone. Just who was that? Could that be... a wisp? Ceresa remembered something Morgana had told her long ago. Children who perish in Avalon become wisps, their souls cursed to wander the forest forever. Hi there, little guy. Uh, are you okay? Who are you? Are you lost? You can talk? I'm Ceresa. What's your name? I'm Colum. Colum, you look troubled. Is something the matter? My friends, the fairies took them away. Colm's lower lip quivered as he spoke. He explained how the fairies would round up wisps and tease them for sport. I want to go help them, but I don't stand a chance against those fairies. You just leave those mean old fairies to me. What? For true? The wisp wasn't the only one surprised by Ceresa's bold claim. Oh, we can't just abandon them. Girl and demon squared off. Neither budged an inch. Cheshire made it clear he wanted no part in this daring rescue. But Ceresa was determined. Well, I'm going, even if I have to fight those fairies myself.
Ahem. <clears throat> I knew you'd come! You need my magic energy after all. Since you're here, how about lending me a paw? Ceresa was secretly happy to see Cheshire, but he was silently brooding. Mm, something happens to you, and it's my neck too. The demon was just looking out for himself after all. Well, with or without you, I'm still going to help those wisps. You just sit back and watch. Oh, how's a weakling like you gonna save anyone? The demon chuckled, his mouth twisted in a cruel grin. Pretending not to hear, Ceresa pressed ahead. So after all that fuss, you're going to help after all? Ceresa teased the demon, who responded with a cold glare. I strike any pests who come near. Unlike you, I have the strength to protect myself, chided the demon. Is that so? Saving the wisps brought a small joy to Serata's heart. Those fairies are just awful. Don't fear wisps. I'll save you. A gigantic tower built by the fairies. Strange contraptions were scattered about its base. Its haphazard construction reflected the disorder in the fairies' hearts. than I expected. Ceresa tried to put on a tough face, but she was ashamed to have been saved by the demon yet again. Cheshire had expected as much. He sat and watched the wisps with an uninterested expression. What was the point of saving these things again? Cheshire asked flatly. Look how happy they are. Colm and his friends can live together again. Maybe find some solace in this forsaken forest. Who cares about them? replied Cheshire. Demons are not known for their altruism. What are you saying? You would just abandon them? Don't you know what it feels like to be torn from someone you love? But as she said these words, Ceresa realized something. Oh... I suppose I tore you apart from those you love when I called you to this world. I was just born. There's nobody I love. No need for love, only strength. The demon's philosophy was simple. You were just born? Then you... I'm this strong as a newborn. Just imagine when I grow! The demon interrupted Ceresa's introspection with rapturous laughter. I, I'm going to be strong too, but I'm going to do it with style. Unlike some creatures I could name. If I had been stronger, I could have saved her that night. As she spoke, visions of the night she failed to save her mother flashed before Ceresa's eyes. Mm. 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 
Thank you, Cereza. Colm was chuffed. He told them he wanted to show his thanks for saving his friends. such short legs, Colm. To be honest, until meeting you, I thought wisps were just a tall tale. <laughs> Cerisa squealed in delight. She was still a child after all. about weaklings like him. We have a job to do. No time to play fort with these pipsqueaks, said Cheshire as he eyed Colm. Why, someone's a grumpy cat. I have something for you too. You think a demon's hunger is so easily satiated? But the drool dripping from the demon's maw betrayed his cool exterior. I think this is the happiest he's been in a while. <laughs> Thanks. Seraysa, you look tired. We're safe here, so why don't you take a little rest? Now that you mention it, I have been on edge ever since coming to this forest. Thanks for everything, Colum. Don't mention it. Let me know if you need anything else. <laughs> yeah. With that, Colum ran off to frolic with his ethereal chums. Boy's final words were still ringing in her ears. 
Cereza's chest felt warm, as if in this dark, cold forest, a flame had been lit deep in her heart. I wonder when I'll see him again. Just thinking about her next dream, Cereza couldn't help but smile. Hmm. You're leaving already? Sorry, we're in a hurry. Can I trouble you with one last request? If you find any more of my friends captured in the forest, would you be so kind as to save them and send them back here? We'll make it worth your while, I promise. You have my word. Thank you. Saying farewell to Kong, they resumed their chase. The white wolf was just ahead. Take care, Cereza. Take care, Kitty. The fairy took them by surprise. Once again, Cereza was petrified with fear. Get out of the way! Chasha yelled at the terrified Cereza. I... I can fight! Don't treat me like a helpless child! Teresa, get it together. I'm going... Uh, I'm going to be a witch. They had defeated the formidable fairy. If only slightly, Cereza felt she had made a difference. Not bad, huh? Told you I'm good for more than just carrying you around. But Cheshire was not impressed. <laughs> you stuck up, demon! Cereza was fed up with Cheshire's arrogant attitude. It's just like before. I wonder what power you'll get this time. Let's go! Awesome! What is this? Was someone watching us? Let's go! 
Tiny little circus. That voice. A familiar voice once again echoed through the trees. Ceresa looked in the voice's direction to see a strange wisp, buried deep in a cap. A wisp? So you're the one who talked to us back there? You know, I haven't introduced myself. My name is Ignis, the keeper of this forest. Good on you for taking care of that circus. I knew I was right about you. Something tells me that Ringmaster won't be enjoying his to bees anymore. A pity. He was an absolute brute. Play a bit part in someone else's show? No thanks. Knowing this voice belonged to a wisp put Ceresa infinitely more at ease. But Cheshire said not a word. He seemed to have no interest in the wisp at all. You said your name was Ignis, right? Ignis? You wouldn't happen to know where we can find the remaining elemental cores, would you? Of course. The next core is at the bottom of the lake. The bottom of the lake? Well, I suppose that's lucky. I was always better at sinking than swimming. The problem is coming back up again. No need to worry. Just drain the water. But you'll have to go over a towering tree in order to get there. To get to the bottom of a lake, you need to climb the tallest tree in the forest. Isn't that poetic? The tallest tree? Huh. Something the matter? Nope! Not a thing! Clock towers! Giant statues! Yes! Witches love high places! Thanks for your help! You're very welcome. I know the secret pathways of this forest. I may be able to take you to somewhere you've been before. If you'd like me to guide you, just ask me any time. Think of it as showing my gratitude for taking care of those pesky fairies. Claws this big, right? What? An ancient tree, long felled, bared its fangs at Ceresa. Ceresa could not shake the feeling that Avalon Forest itself conspired against her. Cheshire's claws seemed like toys by comparison. It had found a new target. Ceresa knew she must fight, but she was petrified with fear.
Like a hawk hunting mice, the draconic fairy searched for its prey. Cheshire tried desperately to transform, but with Cereza's magic in flux from fear, his body remained tiny. You pathetic weakling! <laughs> the cuddly body did not take the edge off his harsh words. Giving in to her fear, Cereza scooped up Cheshire and ran. They had escaped with their lives, but Cheshire was furious at Cereza for her cowardly retreat. Oh. Cereza stood silently, fists clenched. More than anything, she was angry at herself for once again succumbing to her fear. Cheshire's attacks didn't make so much as a dent in that monster's armor. Oh, what am I going to do? For once, Cheshire had no mocking retort. He remembered the battle. This was the first time he had tasted defeat and he did not like it one bit. Just stay out of my way, was all the demon could muster. <laughs> Lost in despair of her own, Cereza barely heard his words. You want to find the next elemental core, right? Get going, then! Cheshire growled for Cereza to go. But Cereza could not muster the strength to say anything back. Next time that thing shows its ugly mug, I'm gonna beat it to a pulp! Cheshire shouted his bravado so Cereza would hear. It did little to quell her worry. I... I... growled the demon, trying to shake Cereza from her stupor. Give up already! You'll never change! I... I... Nobody likes you! You really think you can become a great witch? Give up already! You'll never change! Everything? 
Ceresa could just make out the water shrine in the distance. Before it stood a strange contraption built from thick metal pipes. It was a cage, big enough to swallow up Morgana's manor whole. Ceresa held back her tears, pushing herself forward with all her might. I can't cry. I've got to be strong. She whispered to herself quietly, so that Cheshire would not hear. I wonder if we're in that monster's territory. As the words came out, Ceresa was gripped by fear. But she knew it was too late to turn back. Broken cages were scattered everywhere. Look at all of them! What were these cages for? Cereza started to wonder, then decided it'd be best not to know. It's nearby. I know it. They found themselves face to face with the monster once again. Go hide somewhere! Yelled Cheshire, preparing for battle. Half by instinct, Ceresa found her way to a hiding spot. Without a moment of hesitation, Cheshire threw himself at the enemy. His claws found their mark, but once again left the beast unperturbed. Cheshire continued his fierce assault, but with each exchange he was gradually losing ground. It was only a matter of time before Cheshire was overwhelmed. Is this how our tale ends? I... I can't! I still can't save anyone. No. Not this time! No more running away! I am going to be a witch! I need to be strong! There's got to be something I can do to save him! armor in tatters, the dragon turned tail and fled. Oh, oh, it's 
Cheshire, are you okay? Any serious injuries? Cheshire only shook his head, lest his voice betray the fact that he was shaken. Oh, thank goodness! I wonder if that fairy will be back. But now we know it's not completely invincible. Invigorated from the battle, Ceresa was almost confident. Cheshire was in a sour mood. A part of him realized that if it were not for Ceresa's actions, he would currently be dragon food. But he just could not accept that he had been saved by someone he considered so far beneath him. If I'm going to be an Umbra witch, I can't be afraid of an overgrown lizard like that. We'll get him next time, Cheshire. As she said these words, Cheshire noticed something in Ceresa not present in the timid girl he had met earlier. The prideful demon turned away and pretended not to hear her. anymore. Come on, Cheshire! Like I turn around now? Cheshire grumbled under his breath. He was itching for a fight. Munch. Munch. The monster! Once and for all. You don't scare me. Not anymore. Vile Jabberwock had been defeated. Ceresa was ecstatic. Cheshire turned away. He seemed almost as down as after their last encounter with the monster. What are you talking about this time? We won! Cheshire started grumbling about how Ceresa moving around the battlefield made it hard to fight. 
Ceresa's celebration had been ruined before it could even begin. You do realize it was thanks to my help you were able to defeat that thing, right? You could at least say a word of thanks. <gasps> Putting their argument on pause, they ran to keep up with the white wolf. Morgana's projection appeared before her once again. She seemed relieved. Theresa, you look different. Did something happen, my dear? Morgana! I defeated a giant monster! You should have seen it! Unable to contain her childish glee, Theresa explained how they had taken down the Jabberwock. It is a miracle you escaped unscathed. I thought I told you to find a safe place and stay put. But I must admit, I am surprised. Perhaps you have grown more than I thought. Words of praise from Morgana were as rare as igloos in Inferno. It took all of Ceresa's willpower not to jump for joy. I believe you're ready for more powerful magic techniques. They will allow you to draw out the true strength of your familiar. Listen, Teresa. I have begun my preparations to get you out of that forest. What? The strength of the fairy magic that protects Avalon is immense. It will require an equally powerful spell to break. I have begun my incantation, but it will take until dawn to complete. You must survive until then. Yes, ma'am. Skill at controlling a demon determines one's worth as a witch. Remember this if you hope to take on any more monsters in that forest and live to tell the tale. After Morgana's spectre had vanished, Cheshire let out an angry growl. Oh, Morgana always talks like that. Don't worry, I know you're not just some kind of weapon. But it wouldn't kill you to listen to my advice once in a while. Cheshire snorted in response. Oh, you're hopeless. And with that, Ceresa's good mood disappeared as quickly as it had come. to believe you were the same girl who I found sobbing all alone in a dark nightmare. You truly have grown strong. Really? Thanks. You know, you still haven't told me your name. 
I am Luca on, go on. And you? And you? I'm Cereza. Cereza. What a lovely name. name. Look on. Who are you? Why are you doing so much to help me? I am trapped deep in the heart of this forest by a powerful curse. But as a witch, I believe you have the power to break that curse. What's more? What is it? Your dream. You long to save your mother, don't you? That particular sorrow is one I know all too well. You are also trying to find your mother, aren't you? Yes. Even after countless moons, my mother still waits for me outside the forest. I want to go to her, to dry her tears. Teresa, please break my curse. If you destroy the final elemental core and come to the heart of the forest, my dream, our dream, will become a reality. We can leave this forest together. I will help you save your mother and we can all live as families once again. Look on. I understand. I'll do my best. I want to know more about you. There is so much we have in common. I feel the same way. I have never met another who understood my pain. Shared my dream. Another meeting with Lucaon. Remembering the dream sent Ceresa's young heart a flutter. Cheshire noticed Ceresa's flushed cheeks and stared at her inquisitively. Hmm? Oh, it is nothing. Anyways, there is something I should explain while I have the chance. Ceresa told Cheshire the reason she had entered Avalon Forest. Look on, appearing in her dream. Her quest to save her mother and the power she was promised that waited at the heart of the forest. Cheshire was speechless. Entering the forest based on a half-remembered promise from a boy in a dream? I, I, I know what it sounds like, but it's all coming true. The elemental cores were just as Lucan said, right? These are more than mere dreams. If he did not return to Inferno soon, Cheshire would surely die. The thought that he was chasing the whims of a love-struck child sent his blood boiling with rage. If I don't make him back to Inferno, the last thing I do in this miserable world will be tearing you limb from limb, roared the furious demon. Look how one could teach you a thing or two about how to talk to a lady. Nothing. Come on, let's go find that core. Ceresa and Cheshire came across a pool where lily pads stretched as far as the eye could see. Just how long would it take for this many to grow? They stood in awe of the forest's diligent workings. Well, who do we have here? Frankly, I'm surprised you've made it this far. You even took care of a monstrous Drepperwalk, violent even by fairy standards. I never expected a witch to come along and beat him. And you've destroyed another elemental core. But you don't seem happy. You're not hurt, are you? No, we're fine. Hey, how about telling us where we can find the last elemental core? You know, don't you? Miss, I've often said hurrying would not from nowhere. You sound like my teacher! Come on, don't hold out on us! Dear, dear. The final elemental core 
is in a particularly tricky part of this forest. Inside a fortress, where only the most malicious of the fairies reside. No one who has entered that fortress has ever made it out. Still sure you want to go? Oh, we'll go, all right. I'm a witch, and I'm way stronger now than when I set foot in this forest. We can help. But with your teamwork, maybe you don't have much to worry about. I'm tired of those cruel fairies myself. I'm hoping you can show them what's what. Cheshire was having a grand time steering the lily pad every which way. Cheshire, slow down! Ah! Ah! I'm soaked! I told you to go slow! Seresa. How could this be? Before Ceresa stood her mother. Mummy? Is it really you? Yes, my dearest Ceresa. Come this way. The shade vanished with a blood-chilling scream that echoed through the trees. <laughs> Mummy. <laughs> Cheshire's strike had shattered the illusion, but it had taken a frightful toll on Ceresa. She collapsed to her knees, her mother's final scream still ringing in her ears. Cheshire glanced down at Ceresa. He told her to hurry and get a move on, but the tears would not stop. Come on! If I hadn't dealt with that shade, you'd be face down at the bottom of that cliff! With each passing moment, the demon became increasingly annoyed. Cheshire! How could you? How could you do that to her? Unable to take Cheshire's abuse any longer, Ceresa leapt to her feet. Behind her tears, Ceresa's eyes burned with fury. I save you, and this is the thanks I get! Maybe if you weren't so helpless, I wouldn't need to fight all your battles. Cheshire was not about to back down. Why am I not surprised? I wouldn't expect a demon like you to understand anyway. And just so we're clear, you say I'm weak, but you can't survive without me either, remember? 
Look at you. You wouldn't last five minutes in this forest without me. Their fight was quickly reaching its boiling point. Then came the straw that broke the demon's back. Don't forget who summoned you here. Why don't you just behave like a proper demon and do as I say? Cheshire's eyes narrowed. For a second, he was quiet. Cheshire broke the silence with a threatening growl. I wish I'd never summoned you! <laughs> Good. Good. That's it. That's We're through. We're through. Ceresa's final words echoed off the trees. Then all was still. I can get through this forest fine by myself. I'm not scared. An odd structure appeared out of the gloom, towering before Ceresa. Ceresa, you can do this on your own. You don't need anyone's help. Ah! That's it. Here we go. Ceresa had certainly grown stronger since entering the forest, but even so, making her way alone was proving more difficult than expected. If only Cheshire were here. No, I'm better off without that beast. I can make it through this forest myself. Ceresa heard a familiar voice. It was Cheshire. Injured, he was fleeing from a group of fairies. <laughs> Not my problem. Somehow, Cereza had made it through. Solo adventuring was turning out much more difficult than she had anticipated. The optimism she had right after splitting up with Cheshire was long gone. Speaking of Cheshire, Ceresa couldn't help remembering him. A colossal iron structure stood before her eyes. It was a fort built by the fairies. Ceresa once again spotted Cheshire. Incapacitated by his wounds, he was surrounded by fairies. What has he gotten himself into now? Nope, not going to worry about it. <laughs> but before she knew what she was doing, Ceresa had set off in Cheshire's direction. I'm just going to take a look. I can't let anything happen to my stuffed cat. Who is he talking to? The fairies had captured Cheshire. Within their ranks was one regal-looking fairy who stood out from all the others. He appeared to be talking to Cheshire, but it was too far to hear what he was saying. What does that fairy want with Cheshire? The fairies carried him into some kind of fortress. Cheshire! Forgetting the peril of her situation, Ceresa rushed to follow the fairies into their stronghold. No good. There must be another way in. Huh? You! 
the elusive white wolf had appeared right before Ceresa. It called out to her before running away. Listen, this fortress is crawling with fairies. I think you should sit this one out. But the wolf just stared at her, showing no signs of moving. Let's go together, the wolf's determined eyes seemed to be saying to her. Thanks. You know, to be honest, I was a little scared going alone. Don't tell Cheshire I said that. And so, Ceresa and the White Wolf infiltrated deep into the enemy's stronghold. This tower just keeps going. Cheshire, where are they taking you? Cheshire! Cheshire! They had finally found Cheshire. He was covered in wounds from head to toe. Hiding in the shadows, Ceresa was surprised to hear one of the fairies speaking words she understood. It is simple! We just need the girl! Stay out of our way, and we will ensure your return to the demon realm. They were speaking in Nokian, the language of angels and demons. It sounded like the regal fairy was trying to strike a deal with Cheshire. Ceresa felt her heart beating in her chest. What will it be? This is your last chance, demon. Ceresa waited for his answer with bated breath. Then she heard the familiar deep growl. Oh, like I can trust a fairy. I'll devour every last one of you. Despite his battered body, Cheshire's eyes still smoldered with defiance. Cheshire! <laughs> Thankfully, the white wolf held the nearby fairies at bay. The sudden appearance of two intruders had the fairy fortress in a frenzy. Cereza seized the opportunity and freed Cheshire from his shackles. It was splendid teamwork. Fight! These naughty fairies are about to get punished. Hmm, not bad. Better than you're trying. Punishment, is it? With pleasure. Both Ceresa and Cheshire were on fire. Cool! was cut on Cheshire's leg. Bits of cotton were falling out, along with his magical energy. The fairies had not been kind to their captive. Cheshire could hide his pain no longer. That cut! Unless the wound was mended, the magic-infused threads that bound Cheshire to this world would not last long. Hold still! If you move around like that, you'll just make things worse. Ceresa needed to suture the wound as soon as possible. There was only one way she could think to do it. 
Remember, Cereza. As blood flows through veins, magic flows through a witch's hair. Care for it as you would your most precious tool, and defend it as you would your very heart. Sorry, Morgana, but I found something more important. These were the precious locks Ceresa was growing out to resemble her mother. As expected, they worked their magic. Cheshire's wound closed in an instant. Don't blame me if that teacher of yours has a fit, Cheshire said quietly. Don't worry, it'll grow back. Besides, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. I promise to send you back. Umbra Witch's honor. What, what I'm trying to say is... But before she could finish, Cheshire had already returned to his miniature form. Well, get a move on, will you? He added with a squeak. <laughs> yes, your majesty. Ceresa gave Cheshire a tight embrace. Somehow, she felt that Cheshire was doing the same. Restoration magic! I've never been able to pull that off before. I wonder if it might work on something else. How'd you like that? Don't think I'm so shabby now, huh? No, a cut like this is nothing. But this ribbon isn't so bad. Cheshire said in a slightly embarrassed voice. Yeah, I think it suits you perfectly. Something made them stop. A strange presence. They were not alone. Stop! We need to put to a step in some of the seat of ruin in our kingdom. We will not allow him to win a plastic child from his lover. It was the regal fairy from earlier. Hey! That fairy speaking our language! I think. The regal fairy continued his haughty monologue. Still, his thick accent was nigh unintelligible. This is hopeless. It must be some kind of fairy dialect. So, what? Are you saying you're the fairy king or something? Effect. Who the one true king of the 
What? Okay... So it was you who did all that awful stuff to Cheshire. I see a royal behind in need of a good spanking. Cheshire looked happy to oblige. business. about this. Oh. 
The two sensed danger in the fairy named Puka's words and began to run. Guy. Hmm? What are you on about? What the? Oh, give me a break! Realizing what had happened, Ceresa hurriedly began wiping her face clean. The spectacle was too much for Cheshire. He rolled with laughter. Creepy fairy best hope we never cross paths again. Okay, Chucklepuss, joke's over. All right, let's get a move on. Ceresa frowned and stormed off. Trying unsuccessfully to control his laughter, Cheshire followed after. But each glance at Ceresa sent him back into fits of seam bursting chortles. The sphere burned with a bright red light. The two had arrived at the final elemental core. Number four, we destroyed all the elemental cores. You know what that means. Here's the last elemental power. Let's give it a try. Cheshire gave an annoyed snort. He'll show that smug face of his before long, I'm sure. Cheshire, are you feeling better? Does it still hurt? I'm fine. Cheshire said nothing new. But Ceresa could have sworn she had the trace of a faint power in his voice. <laughs> Glad to hear it. That towel! You made it out of the fortress! Ceresa let out a sigh of relief. The wolf seemed as energetic as ever. You're going to take us to Lucan? We must be getting close. Come on, Cheshire! Hurry! <laughs> Morgana's ghostly form appeared. She took one look at Ceresa and furrowed her brow. Ceresa, what have you done with your hair? Sorry. I just... I needed it for something. Ceresa explained how she had used her hair to save Cheshire. For the sake of the demon! Ceresa, never forget who is the master and who the subject. Under normal circumstances, now would have a stern lecture. But that will have to wait for your safe return. 
My spell is almost complete. I will have you out of that forest soon. Just hold on a bit longer. Oh. Thanks, Morgana. The fairies are a formidable foe. But use all I taught you and defeat them. May the moon light your path. Stay safe, Sarisa. Oh, I'll defeat them all right. And after that, I'll meet Lucan, get that power, and send you back. Ceresa and Cheshire exchanged a glance. Getting the power from Lucan would mean the end to their journey. It would mean saying farewell. Come on. We're almost there. A voice echoed through the trees. It was one of the rare sounds in this forest that put Serata's heart at ease. Ignis! Congratulations on destroying all four cores! You've put those fairies in a right kerfuffle! We couldn't have done it without you, Ignis. Your advice really helped us out. Just doing my part. I told you, it's my job to know the goings on in Avalon. I must say, though, I'm honestly quite impressed you made it this far. We've seen so much of this forest. I dare say we know more about it than you. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Next time I'll ask you for directions. I've been waiting a long time for someone like you, Miss. Waiting? Why? You see... I've lived in Avalon Forest for ages now. It used to be such a beautiful, lovely place. The fairies changed that. They corrupted this forest and terrorized its inhabitants. I've seen them do such horrible things, powerless to do anything but watch. That's why I've been waiting. Waiting for someone to wake us from this bad dream. I'd have done it myself if I still... Ignis, were you... Sorry, I got carried away for a second. Ahead lies that which the fairies have fought so hard to keep from you. I believe it is what you entered this forest to find. Do you mean... look on? Go on! The seal to the altar is now broken! Be safe, you two. May Avalon's blessing be upon you. All of the elemental cores were destroyed, and their barriers were no more. What waited for them beyond, they could not imagine. Are you ready? Just leap in! Claws first! Don't give yourself a chance to be afraid! Cheshire's steady voice filled Teresa with courage.
before them stood Puka, the ostentatious fairy from earlier. He appeared slightly charred from the explosion. Well, if it isn't the self-proclaimed king, what is it this time? We have no words for you, girl. Your infernal compatriot, however, still owes us an answer to our proposition. Too long had a demon suffered under the oppressive yoke of that wee witch. Leave her! The fairy Puka was trying to tempt Cheshire, offering to send him back to Inferno. Did he truly have the power to open a portal right here, right now? With a flamboyant flourish, the fairy opened a massive fiery gate. Ceresa could feel the heat from beyond. The familiar sounds of the forest were joined by the faint cries of the damned. Cheshire? Cheshire slowly approached the gate. As he neared the threshold, memories of their journey came flooding back to Ceresa. rejected Puka's offer. Teresa's question fell on deaf ears. Puka was busy cackling maniacally. Until... turned his gaze on Ceresa. The demon bared its fangs and pounced. Cheshire? Cheshire rampaged. He gave only violent growls in response. What should I do? Maybe I can help him with my magic. Don't worry, I'm here for you. Cheshire, are you in there? Do you recognize me? Now! Calm down. It's okay. Oh, no. 
Cheshire regained control long enough to muster a few words. Hold on, Cheshire! Don't worry, I'm here for you! Cheshire had returned to his senses, but his violent tantrum had taken a heavy toll. Cheshire? Why didn't you go into the portal? Oh, that weirdo. <laughs> Couldn't trust him. Cheshire replied before turning away. So does that mean... You trust me? Cheshire said nothing. He closed his tired eyes. Ceresa sung him a lullaby she remembered from long ago. Fly me to the moon And let me play among the stars let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. A cold, bitter wind continued to blow mercilessly, but their hearts were not cold at all. Together, they could overcome any obstacle. That belief caused their hearts to shine brighter than the sun. Is there no, no challenge, challenge you cannot, cannot overcome? overcome. Ceresa, you, you amaze, amaze me. me. I'm not alone. I would have never made it this far without Cheshire's help. Yes, yes, your control, your control of, that of that demon, demon is, a is a testament to your skill as a witch. witch. Soon, Soon we will meet at last. last. Sarasa, I, I count down, down the hours. hours. They had returned to the forest. A new path appeared before their eyes. It seemed to call to Sarasa, as if a strange force were pulling her. This feeling. Oh, look, Owen is up ahead. I'm sure of it. We're getting close, Cheshire. When you're ready, let's go finish this. They had finally made it. As promised, look, Owen, the boy from Ceresa's dreams was waiting, but unlike his radiant ethereal counterpart, this Lucan looked pale and lifeless. Lu Lucan? As Ceresa called out his name, she heard Lucan's voice ever so faint. Welcome, Ceresa. I knew you would make it. Uh, hold on, Lucan. I'll get you out of there. No, I am here. I'm afraid what you see in that crystal is nothing but a shell. Both Ceresa and Cheshire were startled. The source of Lucan's voice was none other than the White Wolf. Why does the White Wolf sound like Lucan? Don't be afraid. While my body was sealed, my soul still runs free in the body of this wolf. And it was in that body that Lucan had guided them through the forest. You were sealed? But why? My blood. My blood. I am the child, child of human, of human and, fairy. and fairy. Human and fairy? Fear not. Fear not. not all fairies are like those you've met. I wish to live in harmony with humans. For that, I was cursed to this fate. And so the boy told Teresa of his tragic past. Lucan was the last fairy prince, 
the son of the former king and his human queen. The king was loved by his subjects and even sought a way to live in harmony with the human world. But a faction of evil fairies conspired against him. Killing the king in cold blood, they next came for his wife and young Lucan. His mother managed to save Lucan's spirit before she was driven out of the fairy kingdom, never to return again. Unable to kill Lucan, but fearing the return of his royal bloodline, the rebellious fairies sealed his body using a powerful spell. Both your parents? Lucan, you've been through so much. Lucan's past reminded Cereza of her own. Her heart hurt for him. All I could do was wander the forest, trying desperately to hold on to the memory of my human self. But Cereza, there exists one way to break this curse. It requires a special power, something only a witch can possess. And so each time a witch entered the forest, my hope soared. I tried my best to guide them here. But... Oh, Cereza, I am so happy you made it here safely. Now, I beg you, please help me wake from this nightmare. With the seal broken and my fairy power restored, we can leave this forest together. I will help you save your mother. So, please. Something only a witch can possess? Just say the word. How can I help? Why, Cereza, you've already brought me exactly what I need. What? I did? Yes! yes. You, brought you brought the sacrifice! The sacrifice. That, that demon, demon is perfect! Is perfect. Just, Just what we need to break the curse! curse. What? Ceresa could not believe her ears. Sacrifice Cheshire? Hurry! I must I absorb must that absorb demon's, demon's power. power. At long at last, last, the curse will be broken. broken. Well, I... I can't do that! What? What, what, what do you, what mean? you mean? Why not? Why not? Sacrifice Cheshire? I can't do that! He's my friend! Your friend? Your friend? You mean, you mean that, that demon? demon. Teresa, what, what are you saying? saying? Look, at, Look it. at it! Demons, Demons are, are infernal, infernal creatures, creatures that feast on human souls. souls. You witches harness, harness their power, power as a tool, as a, tool. A, weapon, a weapon, nothing more. You're wrong! Cheshire is no tool! He's a living creature with his own thoughts and dreams. We made it this far by working together. So I'm not about to offer him up like some sacrificial goat. I want to help you, but I simply cannot do that. Oh, I don't believe this. I'm sorry, Cereza, but you leave me no choice. Look on. Cereza saw Lucan's face, only a moment ago so full of hope, now contorted by sorrow. She wanted desperately to help him. There must be something else. I'll help you find another way. You don't, don't understand. understand. This, this is my last, last chance. chance. Stop, I'm begging you! 
Hearing the desperation in Ceresa's voice, for an instant Lucan hesitated. But his mind was made up. Captured by the Fairy Prince, Jesha's life force was being drained. I can't believe I trusted you! Ceresa knew what she had to do.
gonna pay for that. Time to take back what he stole! Okay, let's go! Having lost Cheshire's power, Lucaon struggled to stay on his feet, and then... A heroic demon? 
Such altruism was unheard of throughout all infernal texts. But Ceresa understood. You did? The sorrow and anger were gone from Lucan's eyes. My soul cannot hold this fall much longer. I figured this time was my last chance. No! I thought demons were all heartless monsters, but I was wrong. Cheshire, was it? Forgive me for what I tried to do. The only heartless one was me. All of a sudden, there was an ear-splitting crack, and a flash of light illuminated the sky. Morgana had succeeded in breaking the barrier trapping them in the forest. Of course! If we can get you to my master, she'll find a way to save you. What? what? Oh, there's still time. Come on, we have to get you to her. Look, on, I won't let you die here. Splendid. Oh, the pathos is palpable. <laughs> Of Avalon the forest, you have our eternal gratitude. Why, the trees themselves shall sing a ballad of your deeds. It was Puka, the self proclaimed king. His usual retinue was nowhere to be seen. Though his outfit had seen better days, his elocution was still to be admired. For your riddles. Back off! Why? We have no need to quarrel. Our subjects will gladly escort you to the edge of the forest. And, led by our fairy light, one ill needs that lupine guide. Lead a filthy beast where he lies. Puka was after Lucan's spirit and the royal power that it contained. Hearing his words, Ceresa knew it had been Puka who had betrayed the fairy king. Puka who had torn Lucan's family apart before cursing him to wander the forest in solitude. You fiend! Enough! I will run no longer. But in exchange... Let those two go. No! Look on, you can't! This is for the best, Ceresa. My time is up. Look on! Don't give up! We're not going to let you take him, got it? And for the record, I knew you were lying about being a king. So be it! One way or another, he will die. And with his royal line extinguished, we shall be eclipsed no longer. Fairy brethren, the cursed child is finally within our grasp. The false king's son reaches its nadir, and now Poker's star shines bright! Oh!
On Puka's signal, a terrifying number of fairies appeared out of the darkness. Staring down what must have been every last fairy in Avalon, Ceresa's legs began to tremble. But no matter the odds, she refused to give up. But then... The writhing mass of fairies hot on his heels. Kesha ran towards the pillar of light. Escaping the fairies' clutches, the pair made it out of the forest. Or so they thought. by the fairies, they were slowly being dragged back into the forest. <laughs> Refusing <laughs> to give in, Teresa held on with all her might. <laughs> but then... Something sent the fairies flying like leaves scattered to the wind. This was a technique Ceresa had seen before. Morgana! Oh, you loser witch! I should have known you! But before Puka could finish, Morgana extinguished his life with a single powerful strike. Morgana! I'm so sorry for disobeying you, but please, save the scolding for later! This wolf is actually the spirit of a boy. If we don't do something, he'll die. Please, Morgana, can you save him? Morgana said nothing. She gently stroked the wolf's fur. Confused, Ceresa looked at her master. Huh? She saw an expression of which she did not think Morgana was capable. It was warm, filled with love. Morgana? You want to save him? How dare you? How dare you say those words after what you did to him, you foolish girl! Teresa, why is that demon still here? Did you not reach the altar? What do you think those years of training were for? Morgana appeared to be growing more angry by the second. She advanced on Teresa and Cheshire. Morgana? What are you saying? What's wrong? You still don't get it! The training, the brace, the dream! Do you have any idea how long I prepared for the day my precious Lucaon would return? Thunder crashed in the distance. Wind screamed through the trees. A cold chill ran through the air. Dozens of girls I lured into that forest. Each required years of training. All for naught. I was so close this time. 
But you had to go and ruin everything, you selfish brat! Ceresa had endured her share of scolding from Morgana, but this time was different. These were not the words of a strict teacher. They were filled with nothing but pure loathing. Morgana, I... I... Useless girl! Lucaon and I will be together again. You will surrender that wretched demon this instant. Oh, I see. Made a new friend, have you? A demon born under the full moon of the bisextile night. That creature is the key to breaking Luke Orn's curse. Now, Cereza. I've waited far too long to let a child's sentiment stand in my way. Morgana, I know I wasn't a good pupil. I always messed up during training and broke your rules. I... I know I let you down. You might have been strict, but I always knew you cared about me. You are... like a mother to me. I just wanted to... Make you proud. Get away! <laughs> Pull yourself together, she is our enemy. Cheshire tried to get Cereza to her feet. Morgana's next attack would come at any moment. But Cereza could not move a muscle. Just then, something caused Morgana to stop. Using the last of his strength, Luca on clung to her dress. Please, Mother! No more! I can't bear to see you like this! Don't fret, my dear. Soon everything will be back to the way it was. Her expression fixed, Morgana moved her son aside. A pity. You had the potential to become a fine witch, Cereza. If only you'd hardened your heart. But you were always so damn soft!
What's wrong? Giving up without a fight? Ceresa heard Cheshire's voice ringing clearly in her mind. What am I supposed to do? There's no way I can fight Morgana. I see. Well then, I guess that means our journey is over, hmm? The demon sounded disappointed. Our journey? That's what you'd call it, right? This whole thing to save your mum? You blabbered so much about her, even I was starting to look forward to meeting her. Cheshire paused. What is it? I'm sorry for what I did back there in the forest. Cheshire? And you were right. I never would have made it this far on my own. Thank you. Ceresa was moved by the demon's unexpected words. Cheshire, wait! I promise to send you home. I intend to keep that promise. Friends protect each other. Friends keep their promises. Gone was the fear and hesitation from Cereza's eyes. In its place was courage and steadfast resolve. I am an Umbra witch, just like my mum. Come on, let's dance!
Goodbye, Morgana. You did the right thing, stopping my mother. It was an honor to meet you both. It was almost time to say goodbye to look on. I wish... we could have become friends. We did, Sarisa. For that, I am thankful. Mother and child shared a tender embrace. This was the warmth he had been dreaming of. Thank you for always watching over me, Mother. You can rest now. I'm happy I was able to see your face one last time. Good night, my son. Teresa did not know where fairy souls went in this chaotic world, but wherever Lukan wound up, she hoped he would find peace. Come for Morgana the Witch. Her peaceful expression was replaced by one of agony. It was almost too much to watch. This is the fate that awaits every Umbra Witch. An eternity wandering the depths of Inferno. Ceresa did not look away. She watched as Morgana's soul was dragged to the underworld. Cheshire realized that this unexpected twist of fate had delivered exactly what he sought. A door to Inferno lay before him. But the portal was already growing unstable. It threatened to close at any moment. The journey had left the demon totally exhausted. Struggling to keep his eyes open, he stared pensively at his door home. gate will take you back to Inferno. Oh. Go 
on. It'll close soon. Cheshire looked back at Ceresa. His expression said what they were both thinking. If I go back, you'll be all alone. Even after all you've been through, you're still going to treat me like a kid? <laughs> Just wait, I'll be strong enough to summon you myself in no time. You just take it easy for a while, okay? Cheshire quietly turned back towards the portal. A calm returned to Avalon Forest. As if to wash away the pain of the night, the first rays of dawn enveloped Ceresa, bathing her in their warmth. Make it. Looks like you'll be fine on your own, Cereza. Sean! Oh, thank you! I'll see you again when this is over.
You have grown into a splendid witch, Seresa. You are going to be just fine. Once a regular nightmare, after that day, Ceresa never saw that dream again. Meetings and farewells. Thinking of the promise she made to her friend, Ceresa knew that she had gained something irreplaceable. The night was young. Ceresa set off on her next adventure the pale moon lighting her way.
The end. We have heard the tale of an unlikely friendship between a young witch and a lost demon. But there is a secret chapter hidden in its pages that remains untold. This is a story of two young witches who are joined by a powerful bond. From this time forth, it must forever remain a secret, never to be repeated. Within a strange void, Ceresa had been petrified by a mysterious force. And as for Cheshire, he was nowhere to be seen. Could this too have been the work of the fairies? So young was able to resist my power, but I shall have you before long. Oh no. I figured she could handle that forest without my help. But this power is unlike anything I've ever felt before. It goes against all Umbran teachings. But I have no choice. For years, this young girl had protected Ceresa, always being sure to watch over her from afar. Her name was Jeanne, and she too was an Umbra witch, just beginning her training. Unlike Ceresa, Jean lived in the Umbra Witch Village. Though forbidden, she often snuck out to meet her rival. 
The two never missed a chance to compare strength. Jean had been warned about the risks of soul projection, but that stayed her hand nary a moment. For she aspired to surpass Ceresa and become the strongest of all the Umbra witches, a goal that allowed no room for cowardice. I swear, the girl likes to keep me busy. Jean's technique split her soul from her body. She flew towards Avalon Forest. I'm sure of it now. Something is afoot in this forest. And it's not just the fairies. So Razor, where are you? Jeanne had successfully arrived in Avalon. The forest air was tinged with a vile presence. So this is the infamous fairy forest. But there's something else here. I'm sure of it. The Elder would really give me an earful if she knew I was here. Whatever. I'm used to her lectures. Ceresa, where are you? Oh, that girl, always getting herself into trouble. What is that? As Jean proceeded through the woods, she noticed something peculiar. Is that Ceresa's stuffed cat? She must be in trouble. I knew it! Uh, uh, as I thought, this is no fairy magic. Who are you? Cheshire's voice alarmed John. <gasps> Who's there? Show yourself! Don't play dumb. You trapped me in here, didn't you? Cheshire said as he struggled to break free. But it took all his strength just to keep from being swallowed. He could barely move an inch. You're... a demon? What are you doing there? Where's Ceresa? Ceresa? How do you know the girl? Eyes narrowed. Cheshire studied John with new interest. I'm an Umbra witch, apprentice. Jean, I've come to save Ceresa. What have you done with her? Get out here and explain yourself! Oh, like I know where that brat is! Cheshire said, trying unsuccessfully to hide the desperation in his voice. Wait, a demon? Here? Did Ceresa summon you? Jean knew Ceresa well. Seeing the demon-possessed stuffed cat, she instantly grasped the situation. She thought for a moment, then had a truly devilish idea. I have a proposition for you, demon. I'll get you unstuck. But in return, you help me find Ceresa. Find Ceresa? The demon eyed John suspiciously. That's the deal. If you say you'll help me, I'll move you to a body in a less precarious position. I have just the thing. Jeanne produced a stuffed animal of her own. A handsome red stuffed cat. Compared to Cheshire's tattered felt, its velvet fur had a rich sheen. Nevertheless, 
Like I trust a human. You're all the same. You won't trick me! Cheshire barked at Jean. Fine by me. Best of luck, then. Jeanne turned her back on the prideful demon and prepared to set off on her own. Watch! Cheshire yelled, unable to conceal his distress. And with good reason, in a moment he would be sucked into that void for good. More right, let me into that blasted cat. But if this is a trick, your lunch! The demon reluctantly agreed to Jean's plan. <laughs> Very well, demon. Now, into the vessel you go! <laughs> to think this would come in handy here. Demon! Speak your name. I don't have one. The demon showed his gratitude the only way he knew how. An angry roar. I see. Then I shall call you Charles. Charles? Perhaps the demon had grown more attached to the name Cheshire than he cared to admit. <laughs> What's the fuss? Any name will do, right? Off we go now, Charles. We've no time to waste. That was sooner than expected. I've held up my end of the bargain. Now earn your keep. Cheshire was not fond of his new name. But now was not the time. Any protest would have to wait. Thus began Jean and Chesh... I mean, Jean and Charles search for Ceresa. My brave friend, leave now, I implore you. Charles, was that you just now? What are these cracks? Fairy tricks? What is this place? The fairy stench is overwhelming. Yes, this place is always crawling with them. Perfect for a quick snack. The demon had learned a few things on his journey, so he took this opportunity to show off. You know that little crybaby. Charles eyed Jean suspiciously as he spoke. Crybaby? Oh, you mean Ceresa. She may blubber from time to time, but look past the tears and you'll find a truly spectacular power. Ceresa and I have a duty to become stronger. We must protect the legacy of the Umbra. said, well, I'm not surprised she summoned a demon into a stuffed cat. And I dare say, you seem to like it. Like it? I'm counting down the seconds till she gets me back to Inferno. Jean thought that Charles's felt cheeks looked more red than usual. It's Razor. She's close by, I can feel it. But where? Charles heard Jeanne, but said nothing. Deep down, worry weighed heavy on his heart. He let out a sigh. Go any farther, and you will regret it. Who's there? I take no joy in watching you die. Once is enough. You're hiding Ceresa, aren't you? Where is she? 
John's voice echoed through the still forest. Whatever lay ahead would change her fate forever. Jean could not shake this feeling. An inexplicable fear began to swell inside her. Wait! The crack's here! I can feel Cereza from the other side! What? The demon's eyes grew wide. What lay waiting on the other side? Had they finally found Cereza? Cereza? It's faint, but I can sense her magic. And she's not alone. Something put John's nerves on edge. This presence belonged to no fairy. Look! Over there! Charles had spotted something. Jean followed Charles' gaze. She could see a small figure floating in the distance. It was Ceresa. She was unnaturally still, frozen by some unknown power. Jean looked at Ceresa's face. It was as pale as ice. So close. Whoever was behind this was determined to keep the girls apart. Charles bared his fangs and began to growl. The source of Jean's unease appeared before them now. He was suspended in the air, like a fell spectre. Fixed by his gaze, neither dared to so much as breathe. You're the one who was speaking to me before. Who are you? So we meet again, my brave friend. Or perhaps introductions are in order. Yes, you may call me he who affirms all phenomena. My, that's quite a mouthful. You're worse than no name over there. No matter. Anyone crossing the Umbra will pay! Arc Eve Origin. To think that her continued defiance would bring me to this place. A slight miscalculation, but she will be mine soon, nonetheless. And then I will affirm my world. As he spoke, the spectre's eyes grew crazed. They smoldered with a dark energy. But John and Charles did not back down. What absolute poppycock! I won't let you lay a finger on my Umbran sister! Return, Cereza, or prepare to feel the wrath of the Umbra! Now is the time for all to be a foe. Scroll and call forth a fairy from 
from thin air. Using the magic of the fairy realm, this technique gave shape to the pain inside Cereza's heart. Using Cereza's pain? What a cowardly trick! What's the matter? Don't tell me you're giving up already. He probably tastes horrible. I'd better swallow him in one gulp. The demon was already licking his chops. But the specter was unfazed. As he got to his feet, a faint smile crossed his lips. You still don't understand, Dimension. What will happen if you oppose me? How? How do you know my name? I will show you, Jean. Give you a glimpse at what will happen if you continue along your current path. Jean and Charles found they were unable to move. The Spectre had them in his spell. A moment later, a torrent of horrible visions began to flood into Jean's mind. It was a vision of Jean as a grown woman, dealt a fatal blow by an unknown assailant. Stop these stupid tricks! I'll rip you apart! Charles tried with all his might, but he could not move. Jean, I have shown you a vision of things to come. If you do not distance yourself from me, that future will certainly find you. But this fate is not yet determined. Leave now, and it may yet. The spectre rose once again. Suspended midair, he looked down on them with his piercing gaze. He slowly turned to face Ceresa. Arc leave, Orvichet. You cannot resist much longer. Soon you will give me that which I desire. Then, finally, phenomenal activation will be realized. I told you, you won't lay a finger on my unbred sister! Jean stood tall in defiance. Perhaps I was too soft. Witness your cruel fate once more. Back, you too. That pipsquake made a promise to me she has yet to fulfill. You can't have her. The beast gave a fierce roar. Jean, you have seen what awaits you, yet still you would face me. I won't run away. I am going to be the strongest witch of all! You know what awaits, yet still you struggle. Aren't you dying to see what comes next? Stop playing with her memories, you monster! Your 
Perhaps I was not clear. I will achieve phenomenal affirmation. The truth, ultimate that, is a statistical impossibility. The Spectre's right hand began to glow with an icy glimmer. Stop! Yes, that is what you humans say in the face of defeat. And when those pleas go unanswered, that is when you witness true despair. Charles screamed out in agony. The spectral flames were slowly eating through his body, tearing him apart. After I finished with him, you're next. I tried to warn you not to get involved. It's a pity you will not listen. with a light as bright as the sun. For a moment, everything around them seemed to dissolve in the radiant glow. What? What is happening? Could she have awakened? Blood-curdling screams seem to shatter the air itself. This is a Jah, you have made your choice. That fate is now immutable. I will not fear my fate. Whatever may come, I will stand and face it! His power extinguished, the Spectre's body flickered, then faded away. As if in response, cracks and fissures burst all around them, and the world began to crumble. It's all falling apart. Was this all just his illusion? Cereza! The color had begun to return to Ceresa's cheeks. She was not yet awake. 
But from the faint smile on her face, she appeared to be having a pleasant dream. I think she'll be all right. They will be able to return to the forest. And it looks like my time is almost up. Jeanne's body had grown faint. Her technique had reached its limit. Her traveling soul yearned to return to her body. Well, Charles, which will it be? Which? What do you mean, which? Charles returned with a puzzled look. I'm asking, will you go back to that tattered doll? Or shall I send you home to Inferno? Charles blinked incredulously. Home to Inferno? This was something unexpected. Did Jean have such a power? For a moment, Charles simply stared at Jean, saying nothing. Finally, he spoke. You think I'd trust you with that? Just keep it simple and put me back where you found me. I see. Have it your way. But come on, you must like that body. Better than the lump of scraps Cereza drags around. <clears throat> I hate them both the same. Charles grumbled in his usual irritated manner. Besides, you're too rough for my taste. At least the pipsqueak gives me a break once in a while. <laughs> That's so. Seeing through his act, Jean smiled at the flustered demon. She used her umbran arts to grant his wish and returned him to his former body. Cheshire, there you are. I'm gone for a minute and you get yourself lost again. With a peaceful expression on her face, she gave Cheshire a big squeeze. Cheshire sighed and furrowed his brow. But somewhere deep down, he was relieved. Farewell, Charles! No, Cheshire! And don't you dare tell Cereza what happened here. I mean it! I don't take orders from humans, but you saved me back there. I suppose I can make an exception this once, Cheshire added softly. If I didn't know better, I'd swear I was talking to a human. Take care of my friend, Furball. Whatever lies ahead, I'll be ready. I'm going to be the strongest witch of all. Thus concludes the adventure of Jean and Charles. We have seen how Ceresa and Cheshire's journey went from here. But what of Jean? What happened to her? after learning of her fate. It may not be possible to change one's destiny. However, Jean's indomitable spirit and steadfast resolve will surely guide her down a true path. Let us wish her success in her journey and put this chapter away in a safe place. Forevermore, this story will remain our little secret. <laughs>